Sorry that he can't be here this evening, but he um, and I work closely on the uh, committee along with the rest of the members of the committee, and I thank them uh, for all their input. Um, and we have a representative from Keely and Driscoll here, Chris Previte, and he will uh, talk a little bit about it as well. Um, I know it was in the packet, and I know that you've had a chance to look at it. Um, and so I will just do a few highlights, and so will Chris, and then um, if you have any questions, we'd be glad to take the conversation in any way. Uh, this is the culmination of the fourth year of the Conservancy running the Greenway. And um, so I think that's just another nice milestone as well. Uh, and again, for the fourth consecutive year, we have um, increased the net assets uh, as a result of uh, a number of things, but primarily the private contributions during the past year particularly for the carousel, um, um, aided to increase the net assets and, and um, show the, the growth in the uh, value of the, of the Conservancy's assets and the Greenway's assets. Um, in terms of, um, again, specifically on some of the financial statement pages, um, Chris wants to go through a few of those with us and talk about some of the line items. Um, I think it's important to know that we are Please, that these financials will show that the government support that we got over the past year was level. It's about, been about level for the last three years, and we're really pleased with that. Um, we um, we also have you know private contributions that are up um, significantly, and again, that was a result of the carousel and and some of the work that's been done there, and that's been great. Uh, I think the other thing that's important to highlight, which um, we we can turn to in a bit, but um, is the fact that the uh, when you look at the total expenses for the year, when we categorize them, the programs and events uh, represented 78% of the expenses were, went for those things. And that's up 2% uh, from the prior year. Um, and we just continue, as you know, with all of the work that we do here in the board, we continue to focus on how to stretch the dollars the best that we can and how to maximize um, the the funding that goes for the programs and the public events and horticulture and the maintenance and all. Um, uh, the administrative was down from 14% uh, down to 12% and the fundraising held about the same and certainly some of that was a result of uh, the executive director position being vacant for part of the year and we recognize that but I think um, the Greenway management gets uh, kudos for their constant focus on keeping the budget balanced and making sure we live within the revenues that are generated and that the budgets that are approved are a guide, but the most important thing. Um, and again, I, I thank the board and its participation for doing that. So we're really pleased with the results of the year. And with that, I'd like to turn that over to Chris. Chris, you're Yes. And I don't know if someone's going to. Yes. Um, that's great. Um, I just spent a few quick minutes, um, about 10 minutes or so. Uh, first, I'd like to um, you know, talk about the Conservancy and the Finance Department in particular. Um, we've completed or conducted our audit um, for the past six or seven years. Um, every year, the financial you know, controls in the Finance Department and management oversight over the financial controls get better and better. Um, it was a very clean audit. No issues whatsoever in regards to any of our testing. Um, if there were any issues, uh, any material misstatements, or any significant audit adjustments, I would be presenting those today as well. Um, <clears throat> so I'm glad to say that there, there were no adjustments or any significant changes. And that's, um, you know, even with some of the change in uh, management in the finance department, um, the, the Conservancy, um, particularly Jesse, has done a great job of, you know, overseeing that process and making sure it was very seamless. Um, and we had no issues in conducting our audit or our audit work. Um, I'd just like to go to the opinion uh, right here, uh, one more page over. Um, the one document in the entire financial statement that is, that is ours, um, and again, as uh, Chris had mentioned, my name is Chris Brevity, I'm the audit partner from Philly and Driscoll. Um, the opinion to the financial statements um, is our one document, and this year it's, it's actually a two-page document because the AICPA has changed the, the format, the look and feel. Um, 
but what the, the key items in the opinion really are to explain to the, the reader of the financial statements, what management's responsibility is over the financial statements. And essentially, these are the concerns, these financial statements. Our job as auditors are to audit the numbers that they provide to us. Um, that paragraph explains that management has provided us information that is, are in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, and that they've accounted for all transactions in accordance with those principles. The second paragraph here explains our responsibility as auditors. Our responsibility is to audit those transactions and to um, ensure that the, those transactions um, are provide reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free from material misstatement. Um, it says reasonable assurance because we don't provide absolute 100% assurance that every single transaction was complete and accurate because we as auditors don't have the time or we, we do not audit 100% of the transactions. But we, we select a sample, um, a pretty detailed sample in all of our testing. Um, if there was ever um, an error in any of those testings, we would expand that sample. Um, to gain uh, reasonable assurance that the financial statements were free from misstatement. There were no errors in any of our samples or any of our testing, um, so I'm happy to say that on the next page, um, where our opinion is stated, that this is a clean opinion. Um, it's a clean opinion is an unqualified opinion. Um, it's the best opinion that you can issue as an auditor, and it's an opinion that any type of organization wants to receive. And then the other matter paragraph down below, uh, that's just to inform the reader that the other information, the supplemental schedules at the back of the financial statements, um, they're not required schedules. Those are, uh, therefore, since they're not required, they're not audited as part of our auditing procedures. Um, but the, the figures in those schedules are part, um, are encompassed in our overall audit uh, steps. So we do need to provide some assurance over that until we do reconciliations. Um, and that's just our, our us opining on those back schedules as well. <clears throat> um, okay, so I'd like to spend a few minutes on the core schedules for the balance sheet, the statement of activities, uh, and your statement of functional expenses. Uh, Chris has um, already pointed out some of the key highlights on your balance sheet. Um, you can see the overall cash position of the conservancy increased year over year from 1 million to 1.4 million. So it's an increase of 400,000. There's, an, there's a statement of cash flows um, that is on page eight that shows the detail in and outs. Um, really, it's made up of three key transactions. One, there was an increase in net assets in the current year of 1.5 million. Um, a lot of that was restricted contributions, as Chris had mentioned, um, for the construction of the carousel. Um, so a lot of that money was spent. So that $1.5 million essentially was spent and put into the, the carousel in place. Um, the, the, the real difference uh, when you look at the ins and outs of the cash is in the accounts payable, um, really due to just timing. So we'll look on page uh, four in one minute, but the accounts payable had increased uh, by $400,000, really just due to timing. Um, the carousel was in uh, full steam at the end of June. Uh, there were some larger invoices included in that amount that was subsequently paid at the year end. Um, the second um, uh, mezzanine section here, really the, the assets whose use is limited or restricted. Um, there's two pieces of assets whose use is limited. We have a current portion, um, that piece of uh, restricted use investments or cash that we expect to spend within the next 12 months, and then our long-term portion here, which is that 14.7 million. Um, that, those amounts are broken out by donor-restricted, border-restricted, uh, or pledge receivables. That those amounts that we do not currently have as cash or investment yet. Um, you can see that overall between our current portion and our long-term portion, there was an increase in some in our restricted cash or investments. Main reason for that increase is we did collect some of the pledge receivables that were outstanding from one year to the next. And the only other significant item I'd like to point out on page three here is you can see the Greenway improvement, significant change from 2012 to 2013. Um, that's really all the work that was done um, mainly on the carousel. However, there are some other improvements that uh, occurred during the year onto the Greenway that would also get capitalized. So these amounts do not run through as an expense of the conservancy, but they get capitalized as assets uh, on your balance sheet. Uh, page four, uh, these are the liabilities of the organization. Um, as you can see, the one item I did mention already was the accounts payable, the significant increase there, really strictly due to timing um, of the size of the invoices that were received at year end. And then the only other um, item on this page uh, for you, liability and net asset schedule, is your total restricted, unrestricted, and tempor temporarily restricted um, and perm-restricted net assets. The composition of the net assets is further broken out in the footnotes, 
to the financial statements, um, uh, which are which everybody has. Okay, page five, which is your statement of activities. Uh, Chris had briefly um, discussed the government support, which is that top, uh, top item, uh, which is consistent from year to year. Um, overall, the one item I'd, I'd like to, to point out on the schedule is do you see our total revenue and support minus our total expenses here will get you to the total change in net assets of $1.5 million, almost $1.6 million. That's a positive increase. Um, you know, a number of factors um, played into that. One, an increase in contributions, both uh, private, um, increase in investment return um, due to an uptake in the market, um, as well as a decrease in expenses due to um, you know, more controls over um, some of the spending that um, you see on your statement of functional expenses. Page six. Um, page six and seven really, I, I like to look at in tandem, we'll only spend really a few minutes on page six here, which is your 2013 expenses of the conservancy. Page seven are your uh, 2012 uh, expenses. Really overall there was a decrease in $330,000 from year over year. Um, you know, a testament really um, to management for um, digging down into the conservancy's expenses and to see where um, certain uh, costs and savings can be had. Um, Chris had made reference to that uh, program expenses um, have increased while administrative expenses had decreased from 14 to 12%. Um, that really is best of class practice when you look at um, similar type organizations and other nonprofit organizations. Um, ideally, program programmatic expenses um, should be above 75%. The conservancy is at 78%. Um, administrative expenses are below 10%. Um, so it's really a, 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 a tightly run organization um, and expenses are um, closely monitored and, um, and, and, and kept at a minimum. Page seven, uh, again, this is just prior year for comparison purposes. Um, page eight is your statement of cash flows. Um, really the ins and outs of the, the overall change in your cash of $400,000 is what's represented um, in a, um, you know, a gap presentation financial statement on page eight here. Um, again, the, the three key items I did discuss already on, on page three. And then starting on page nine, um, page nine throughout the rest of the financial statements are the footnotes. Um, the footnotes explain the, the conservancy's um, accounting policies. How, how are the items reported on the financial statements? So if anybody is curious as to you know, how um, property and equipment is reported, um, and how investments are reported, you would come to the financial statements. Any item that's listed on page two, page three, or page four of your financial statements is described within the footnotes to the financial statements. Um, and um, again, we won't go through the footnotes, but overall I did want to say that the audit, um, very smooth process, um, no, no issues whatsoever, um, and the, the Conservancy did do a, a great job providing us a, a great package to audit and um, move forward year after year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you have had a chance to look at it in advance. Are there any questions or anything you want to talk about more? Um, and I don't know if you would like to um, have us do a board vote now or, or see if there are any other questions. Um, are there any questions on the board from, from anything? It was really straightforward. And, uh, thank you. Thank you, Chris. That doesn't happen. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Josie. And, and thank you, Renee Woods. Where Renee? are you, Renee? There you are. Um, for those of you who haven't met her, Renee Woods joined us um, just as the audit year ended. So she got to go through the audit without ever having been here. And uh, did a wonderful job with it. Um, and so we uh, thank you for joining us and thank you for your work. Um, are there any questions on the, on the board? Okay, are there any questions from the public? Yes. Uh, yes, I, uh, earlier I seemed to refer to 12% administrative expenses and then I heard less than 10%. Can you clarify that? Sure. Um, I may have misspoke, I was going off of the... Yeah, it, you're, you're correct. It's for, from 14% to 12%. Fundraising was at 8%. Is there anything? Okay. Come on up. Just bring a chair up. Uh, yeah, anyone else? Okay. Um, all right, then um, I'd like to call for a vote. Um, may I have a vote to approve the audit of financials for so the year ending June 30th, 2015? So moved. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you
want to call it's a much bigger role. Um, <laughs> call the last one. Clinton Bench? Yay. Chris Manfredi? Yay. Woody Lynn? Yay. Helen Chinchilkti? Yes. Georgia Murray? Yes. James Chan? Yes. Jane Papalardo? Yes. Suzanne Lavoie? Yes. Robin Reed? Yes. Chris Fincham? Yes. Young Park? Yes. Maggie Hunt? Yes. And Cheryl Cronin? Yes. Thank you all. And I do feel like I should say thank you to Lisa Schimmel one last time. I know. Um, you know, it, 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 she really did an incredible job for us here um, for, mm -hmm. for the last few years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know where Lisa is right now, but if she, if the, the vibes <laughs> out to her, that, um, yes. that her ears should be ringing, mm -hmm. that, um, that she left us in very good shape. Um, so now we get to um, bring forward um, some nominations, some new to the board, um, some renewing on the board. Um, we're delighted um, that Vivian Wu is joining us. Um, she is um, the representative from the CRA, and uh, it rounds out our whole six um, board members from the neighborhoods, um, and we're thrilled. Um, you're joining the Gus group, the fact group of six, and the group of the 21 of the board, and uh, so we welcome you. She's got some great experience that I know you've all read um, in, uh, in the, the, the Chinese community, and in Boston in general, and just worried about housing, worried about the environment, um, and we welcome you to bring those concerns to us and to the um, And so, and I guess we should do this, um, I, let, let me just explain and then we'll take a, take a vote, I don't think this is controversial. Tim Morningstar <laughs> um, is joining us as the governor's appointment appointee. Um, we're thrilled to have him. Um, he is a Dane, and I know you've read his resume. What isn't on his bio, but what, when I met with him for coffee, I found one of the most interesting things for joining our board is that in 1998, do I have the year right? 97. 97, okay. Um, he graduated from Harvard and did his senior thesis on the big dig. I'm telling you, what could be more appropriate than that? Um, so he, uh, he probably knows more about the underpinnings of the Greenway than most of us on the board do, but um, thank you for Tim for accepting that. And Woody Lynn, Martin Lynn, who has been with us for um, three years and um, has agreed to serve for another three years as a board member. Um, so we have, um, we ha and, and really, I mean, I should say more about you, but we, you know, Greg as the chair of the investment committee, I feel like we all know. Not much to say. Did you know? There's a lot, a lot to, say. to say. Chair of the investment committee, where when you heard that we did well on our investments last year, a lot of that is due to um, Woody's excellent um, leadership on that committee. So um, we thank you for that. Um, and so may I have, um, rather than go through the roll three times, May I have a vote to approve um, those three board members for a term to be for three years? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, great. Clinton Bench? Yay. Chris Manfredi? Yay. Woody Lynn? Yay, yeah, yeah, not on myself. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so used to calling you on the roll. Yeah. Um, Helen Chinchlifty? Yes. Georgia Murray? Yes. James Chan? Yes. Jane Papalardo? Yes. Suzanne Lavoie? Yes. Robin Reed? Yes. Chris Fincham? Yes. Young Park? Yes. Maggie Hunt? Yes. And Cheryl Cronin? Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you and welcome all. Welcome. Uh, welcome. Uh, that's great. Okay, we now have the nominations for the slate of officers. Um, we haven't changed. Um, it's uh, George Murray, myself as chair, Young Park as vice chair, Bob Gore as treasurer, and Maggie Hunt as clerk. Um, May I have a motion to accept? Second. Second. Great. Amy? Great. Yes. Chris and Fred? Yes. Oh, actually, we should at this point, Vivian? Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Chris and Fred? Yes. Then Woody Lynn? Yes. And Tim Morningstar? Yes. And Helen Chinchlifty? Yes. And Georgia Murray? Yes. James Chan? Yes. Jane Papalardo? Yes. Suzanne Lavoie? Yes. Robin Reed? Yes. Chris Fincham? Yes. Young Park? Yes. Maggie Hunt? Yes. And Cheryl Cronin? Yes. Thank you. Great. So we start another year. Um, and uh, uh, we've got a lot to talk about today. Um, but first up is the procurement policy because that's just so exciting, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we were just and we were just doing this. Uh, mm -hmm. We just updated it, um, and here we are updating it again. But very minor minor change this time. Um, 
it's uh, when you put a, a new policy into effect, you immediately learn. Um, <laughs> and so what we wanted to bring back was, um, and it's sort of tied to the other procurement item that's on the agenda, um, the, the board um, should have the ability to approve contingency in addition to the contract amount. Um, and we've written that explicitly into the policy now, um, having learned the lesson of it's useful to get that contingency approval, which is the second item, which I'll go immediately to, though I think it's two different votes. Um, on the um, carousels and carvings contract, um, that is for the fabrication of the carousel, um, the board has voted the approvals for this. Um, we had um, change orders, I mean, on a $900,000 contract amount, we had $33,000 of change orders, which were coming for approval. Um, it, written into the policy, because it is over $20,000, um, we're coming to the board for approval. However, I think that um, uh, with hindsight, we should have asked for a contingency amount in the original approval so as to um, kind of obviate the need for coming back again on something that really is within budget and um, is a, a reasonably nominal uh, amount compared to the total contract. Um, and so that is why we're proposing changes to the procurement policy. Um, it's only about two sentences if you've seen the redlined um, version. So um, happy to go in further depth into the specific contract changes um, if necessary or um, take, the, uh, take the vote on the procurement policy first and then go to the second. Just one question in looking, looking over the procurement policy this time, and I'm sure looked over it before, but do we have a, a standard uh, practice for uh, advertising, uh, uh, putting out a request for proposals, or how we sort of uh, identify potential contractors and such, or what's our standard um, practice, I guess? <laughs> well, I'm not sure that there is exactly a standard practice, because the, I mean, this carousel contract was the first that was um, very sizable. I mean, the Work Inc. contract that we've done, um, you know, the universe of contractors for those type of projects um, is relatively small. Um, you know, it, they make themselves known to us when they are, when there are projects of that size, and we are clearly, because our principle is best value, um, very much on the lookout for good contractors. And so if anybody is aware of anybody that is interested in doing a work on the Greenway and is a quality contractor, bring them to our attention. There is not a um, formal or standardized way in which we um, seek out or advertise to contractors that might be analogous to um, you know, publicizing it in X or Y publication. Um, Linda or Steve, want to add any commentary? Well, current, current policy would tell you to get at least three comparables. So I, I'm not sure, Clinton, where you're where your question is, if it's do we do we have a, a set policy of where we look for vendors, or how many vendors would we typically get? But I know in operations we try to get between three and five different proposals. Oh, so I don't think that's specifically mentioned in the policy. I mean that's certainly reasonable practice, I, and I don't. I'm not trying to <laughs> slow down the action that that staff is proposing today, and the audit and finance committee is proposing. Um, I just would suggest, having looked at it today, that just to uh, further improve our transparency, that perhaps we consider, you know, the next time around looking at this, um, to add some sort of a statement that you know we would at least post it on our website, so that you know any contractor that was interested in working with the conservancy, to the extent that we do put out additional contracts, would just know that that's a place to come and work. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, yeah. The, um, it is also, it has been the case that when I mean, you take the, the working contract and the um, carousel con, the, the carousel fabrication contract and the carousel site contract that, um, this, this doesn't refute that point, but um, uh, we've, we've gotten fewer proposals than contractors that we reach out to. Um, that's not to say there aren't others out there that didn't hear about it that would have proposed, but then um, we're trying to get to a broader group that actually ends up being ultimately interested in the opportunity. Thank you. Sure, anyone else? Any comments? Okay, um, 
Then I'd like to have a vote to approve the revised procurement policy. Um, Woody Lynch? Yes. Tim Morningstar? Yes. Helen Chinchlifty? Yes. Georgia Murray? Yes. James Chan? Yes. Jane Papalaro? Yes. Suzanne LaVoy? Yes. Robin Reed? Yes. Chris Finchin? Yes. Helen Park? Yes. Maggie Hunt? Yes. And Cheryl Cronin? Yes. Great. Um, so the second item on here that I referenced, um, carousels and carvings there uh, were a a few change orders, um, a small number, and I mean overall, very happy that the the carousel project um, is on budget, was on time, um, and the um, the specifics of the approvals. Um, if there are questions on, um, Linda can can answer them. Um, this work obviously has in fact been done because we needed to open the um, carousel. Um, and it, that again illustrates why we needed to make the change to the procurement policy is because we find ourselves sometimes in these situations. Um, but uh, uh, you know, all fairly small amounts. Um, that's kind of fun reading and in, in, uh, making the reinforcing the carousel so that it can accommodate the um, heavy rocking um, sea serpent boat. Um, not your typical change order. Um, and I mean, I think we were very lucky overall in the project that we didn't have sort of below ground change orders in any kind of meaningful way. That wouldn't have been to carousels and carvings, that would have been to the Commodore contract, but um, where I think we were delighted that where change orders were coming in, they were for things like upgrading the tent fabric. And so um, very pleased, I think, with this as a list of change orders. Uh, the other piece to this approval that we were asking for, again, to sort of um, forestall the situation that we uh, immediately found ourselves in is an additional $11,000 of contingency approval. Um, we, carousels and carvings is to do the, the intended winter enclosure, um, and so this would give us a small amount of contingency on that. I will say, however, that um, we, the carousel that um, is built includes, and it out there already, our roll down sides that um, we're actually really pleased with. That they are, um, there's much greater transparency and the much bigger um, sort of uh, panels in them for visibility into the carousel, and we have begun um, rolling those down, or I should, when I say we, the operator, um, <laughs> has begun rolling those down. It's a necessity to prevent mildewing and um, to maintain the fabric, but um, it's also protects it from um, bad weather. Uh, so that's happening a couple of times a week. Take a look at that because we actually um, are so pleased with them that we think that it is possible that um, we will not need to build the winter enclosure, that the effect that we were all looking for of um, sort of transparency and um, glowing and attractive um, might perhaps be achieved with um, something that is there already. And so we will monitor this and we will come back um, at the November meeting with some further discussion of it, but that um, we are hopeful that, um, in fact, not only will we not need the 11,000 of contingency that we're asking for, but there might actually be um, an ability to get the exact same effect we've all talked about and hoped for um, without that subsequent um, building. Interesting. How would that work with security? Is it, will the existing one be good enough to keep vandals out? And well, so far, um, it's, you know, I mean, so far it has been operating open. Yeah. Um, and we've not had any issues with that. There is um, built into the system, if you, um, there are essentially motion detectors that set off lights and set off a <laughs> you are trespassing message, um, and um, so far so good. Um, and We haven't, it, it hasn't been tripped yet, has it? Um, I believe it has been tripped, but oh. not. Um, <coughs> I asked the operator to test it. Oh, okay, but, but I mean it has. The operator could trip it, <laughs> but it ha we haven't had an incident or somebody coming in and trying to trip it. Does it connect to the police? Uh, it does not connect to the police. It's a deterrent. Um, there is a camera mounted in the ticket booth that um, doesn't have perfect lines of sight. We are actually looking at the potential, perhaps in partnership with the um, Harbor Island Pavilion, of an additional camera that might have better lines of sight. Um, 
though that camera in the booth is not um, remotely accessible either, and so that's, it again is sort of an after the fact. But we do have, um, and we've got almost five years of experience with security on the Greenway, and there, I mean, knock on wood, have not been, um, we're all familiar with some of the issues that there are with, um, but they have not been issues particularly of vandalism or damage. We also specifically at that site have had the rental carousel there, and there have not been issues with the rental carousel, and so it's why we feel pretty confident that the measures that are in place, which are greater than used to be, um, should be sufficient, but we will again. The, the, the rental one wasn't there in the winter, it wasn't dormant. No, it's true, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we will keep, it will be, continue to be lit, um, and there are, you know, I mean, it, it will remain an active area, and, you know, a lot of eyes on the site, so, um, yeah, there, there have been a lot, there has been a lot of discussion um, at the staff level about this and, um, you know, what the costs would be and what the risks are, and the history suggests that we should not give in to the nervousness that we all feel on this and spend a tremendous amount of money for somebody to sit out there. There are better things to be done with those dollars, but it, do we have it does cause uh, do we have nervousness, uh, particularly Linda. Do we have a good insurance policy? Um, yes, we have. Uh, we have a lot of insurance. Good. I call insurance. We hope it ends these. So, Jesse, what are you looking for? In uh, so, we would. Um, we're asking for approval of the um, about thirty-three thousand dollars of contract change orders for carousels and carvings, as well as um, the eleven thousand of contingency that we presumptively will not need. <laughs> Oh. Second. <laughs> I mean, second. 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 Uh, second. 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 And Sharon Cronin. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. That ends the voting part. Of the <laughs> I'm glad to hear. Um, but there are um, lots of things that we need to discuss. Um, and it seems like it's been a while since we've had a board meeting to discuss things. So it will be nice to just sort of, and uh, there's been a lot happening on the Greenway. Um, it's been nice to have, at one point, um, a few weeks ago, we had 30 article, 31 articles written various publications on the Greenway in, the, in a few weeks, and the way vast majority were way positive, and that was wonderful to see. Um, so it's, uh, but, you know, we've got to plan for next year and, and think through what we what we learned this year. So that's how the discussion is kind of framed. Jesse's going to lead it, um, and uh, it'll just be one thing at a time, but, um, but we want to make sure that everybody is up to speed with what we're up to and what we're thinking forward um, so yeah I wanted to run through some updates um, the mural the new mural is up the uh, most gemios mural came down our um, goodbye to the most gemios mural um, picnic was very soggy um, <laughs> but um, it the painting over of that mural and the painting of this mural um, was actually a, a great way to, um, with, with the painter staged out there, and with the conservancy there, to kind of engage in the dialogue again about public art in the city. And um, the, the Matthew Ritchie mural will be up for um, 12 to 18 months. Um, the condition of the, the work will um, influence that. 18 months is the outside end, uh, because that's what, the, what temporary art is approved for in Boston. Um, this mural, like the previous one, was done in partnership with the ICA, um, and our public art working group was um, uh, was instrumental in bringing Matthew's name forward as a um, uh, as a, as a next artist here. Um, I think we've heard really positive things. Um, you know, I, I think there are some who've said we're glad that the new mural's up, as opposed to the other mural. There are some that have said. Um, 
I like this mural, I didn't like the other one so much, but almost nobody has said, I don't like this mural, which, um, which is great. It also um, was the subject of um, the in Sunday's paper, um, Sebastian Smee, the, the Globe's art critic, um, kind of used the new mural as the, the inspiration for a discussion about public art in Boston. I think that's exactly what we hope will happen. Exactly what we hope will happen is that the mural will, and the public art on the Greenway will um, draw people to the Greenway to look at it and enjoy the park, and will spark a discussion about um, public art and its place um, in the city, in the Commonwealth. Um, and so that was, that was great to he see. Um, he celebrated the new mural and, um, uh, and called for more that was like it. So um, I, think that's, I think that's really great. It's also, um, this is, to, to George's point, the fifth front page of the globe for the Greenway in the last month and a half. Um, and all positive. Which is um, the key part, I suppose. Um, it, I know, I know. Well, I think I think what's nice is that um, it's it's been the mural twice, um, the carousel once, the pianos um, once, and the article about the um, the Greenway as the People's Park. But the what what I look at in a bunch of that is, um, I mean, the mural and the pianos are. Um, the Conservancy working in partnership with others. Those were um, working with the ICA or working with the Celebrity Series. Um, it's great that there are great partners that, that want to work with the Conservancy and partner with us now, um, but it's also, we, we would not make the front page without those partners, and so um, you know, we, we couldn't do it by ourselves. Um, the carousel, um, it, it hasn't been six weeks, but it does feel like, haven't we talked about this a lot? <laughs> Do we need to update everybody on this? But of course, it's been it's been terrific. Um, the um, uh, this is George at the opening um, itself, um, and uh, Amelie, our um, our wonderful donor for this, um, she and her family that day I think had a had a wonderful time and have um, remained in touch, emailing us and thanking us for the for the event, and um, you know delighted that it has pleased the public and the press and those that stepped forward and made this kind of contribution. Um, the, it has attracted um, great ridership. Um, in fact, uh, through the first month, we have sold more tickets than the rental carousel the three previous years put together for that equivalent period, the Labor Day and you know next kind of 30 days. Um, so, of course, we're kind of riding the high of opening, but we're hopeful that that will continue, and it's attracting not just lots of kids, but <laughs> others as well. Um, the, this was on opening day. It has also, at night, attracted a number of bachelorette parties that um, I think are just passing by. They're coming from Daniel Hall. They're coming from bars nearby. Um, we're putting them on the carousel instead of having them bother residents. Um, <laughs> The, uh, the pianos have been um, a great hit. I think it's, um, if you've been walking along the Greenway, there are seven of the approximately 75 that are um, 75 citywide, seven that are on the Greenway, um, and space throughout the park, different types of experiences in different places. Here's obviously in the North End. Um, you find all sorts of people playing them. Uh, the, uh, one in the Wharf District Parks, um, dueling pianos in Dewey Square, um, that's at the Rings Fountain stage. There's also one in Chinatown Park, as well as um, one on Rose Wharf Plaza. Um, so How those have been, uh, they come down soon, like within a week. Yeah. Anybody know these? I think it's either October 16th or 17th. So go play soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go listen to Jane play soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, this past week, uh, Sunday, was the Boston Local Food Fest, second year that it has been on the Greenway, fourth year that it's been in Boston. Um, it was kind of soggy on Sunday, um, and so instead of the 30,000 people that they've gotten in past years, they got only 15,000, but that's still a big, big crowd. It well attended. Yeah. Lots of people. Um, it uh, got a nice write-up in, in Boston Magazine with many more photos if you're interested in seeing that. Um, a lot of, um, I mean, all 
local businesses and some that were quite local to the Greenway as well. Um, in the bottom left, that is a um, farmer's market bus. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the two little free libraries, um, you may have noticed these. Um, it's uh, have a book, leave a book, need a book, take a book, um, sort of honor system library. Um, one in the North End, one in um, Rose Wharf Plaza. And uh, the books have been turning over rapidly. Um, there were some challenging selections in there, and even those. <laughs> um, there was some D.H. Lawrence and some Kafka. <laughs> um, so if you have a book um, and you want to donate them, drop them off here, drop them off at our offices, we'll take them up, or, or just drop them in the park when you're walking through. Mm -hmm. um, in the background there, you see the, the North End piano. Um, we, two Saturdays ago, um, hosted a big volunteer day for National Public Lands Day. Uh, this is the second year that we have done that. Um, and it's, as we have talked about, our volunteer program has expanded significantly and we're looking to it to expand um, significantly in the year ahead as well. We have posted for a full-time volunteer coordinator. If you know great candidates, send them our way. Um, the 70 people that came out um, did all sorts of tasks from um, kind of regrading of the, the stone dust paths in the North End to um, additional understory plantings, uh, near the Harbor Island Pavilion. Um, additional planting near Rosework Plaza. Uh, we did some, uh, a significant replanting there in the spring, but thinner than we intended. Um, having seen the way it looked and what filled in and what was working, um, some additional planting that went in. Um, you have uh, father-daughter um, out uh, to volunteer. Um, also, tasks that were not so glamorous as adding new plants. Um, this was washing around the planters. Um, at Armenian Heritage Park, um, we, when we took over operation of the park, um, uh, maintenance of the park um, and care in, um, at the beginning of July, one of the things that, um, that Stu, Steve Stu, um, the whole team did was identify do a comparison of the original planting plan with the plants that were in the park and bring to the attention of the foundation, here's, here's the difference. Um, would you be interested in sort of either um, going after your original contractor, if that was the issue, or in having us purchase plants um, to fill in? Um, they, they took the list and sort of divided it in two um, and did half the planting now. I think they hope to do another half the planting in the spring or next year sometime. Um, and so, uh, that's the, the bottom left is some fill-in planting occurring um, throughout. Um, on the right is there are trench drains and so we had uh, we had volunteers that were helping to unscrew every single one of those and clean out the trenches and so um, great help. Um, not all uh, not all sexy work. Um, yeah. um, it helped to have a really pretty day. Um, last year it was not so great out. Um, work uh, taking care of the mother's walk. Um, that's, that's Charlie, um, who would be doing this presentation, except he is on vacation. Um, <laughs> and then um, back to the carousel for a second, just to talk about an upcoming event. Um, on Monday, Columbus Day, um, we will hold Community Day on the Greenway. Tickets of the carousel will be um, buy one, get one free. Um, and that's from uh, 11 to 1 to kind of mirror across the street at Christopher Columbus Park. They're having festivities 11 to 1. Um, additionally, we will um, turn up the Rings Fountain. So that day from 9 to 2, the fountain will be not for running through. The weather will be a little cool for that. Um, last day of the fountain before it gets turned off, and we are going to let it loose. Um, so it'll be good to come see the show um, as the fountain goes, you know, twice the height that it normally goes. Um, unless it's so windy that the anemometer damps it down. But um, uh, turning from there to the um, community workshops, we have done uh, community workshops in the North End, the Wharf District, and um, Chinatown communities. Um, later this week, we have one here in the Leather District community um, with Chris Becky, who isn't here tonight. Um, and the input we've heard there has helped um, kind of direct 
the improvements and fixes that we have done subsequently. So again, this is reasonably old news, but in, in uh, at the spring North End community meeting, um, there was a call for focus on the pergola and focus on shade, and so rolling out these umbrellas this summer. Um, in Chinatown Park, um, there was on the left too much shade, and so there was a request to um, uh, do some pruning. Um, and so that is um, the after picture. Um, on the right is um, more cigarette butlers. Um, unfortunately, also in that picture, you will notice some cigarette butts right <laughs> near the cigarette butler. So, you know, you build it and they will come, not always. Um, but uh, there are a couple more that are out in response to that request. Um, we also, from the Wharf District um, community meeting, um, and from our own observations, the, the light blades um, four or five years in have not been um, uh, holding up. There are a couple that were flickering. There were a couple that were out. We tried a lot of um, different things. We got them working during um, the winter lights, but it was text the light blades, but they um, were being extremely maintenance intensive and ultimately the conclusion was that we needed to um, upgrade them. And so instead of two cams shooting up that, that formerly gave the lights a look of you know, sort of one light but two streams of light, there's now a light bar. Newer technology, uh, much better. Um, I, uh, Steve gave me notes on this because Steve's very shy. Um, I forgot to have the notes out, so if you want more technical details about what was done here, um, you can ask Steve and, and force him out of his cocoon. Um, the, uh, we also, with input from um, the Wharf District community, this was great. Um, the Chris and others sort of observed that the Harbor Fog Fountain, Ross Miller's um, original um, piece of public art in the park, um, was less was quieter than they thought it was. And we said, no, we think it's, no, we think that that's, that's the, the volume that it's supposed to be at. But prompted by those, um, went back and checked, and there were some, um, uh, some adjustments that needed to be made. So Harbor Fog is back at full strength. Um, more responsive, louder than ever. Um, uh, and then this is of a different sort. This is not, um, uh, this is not something coming directly out of community feedback, but um, a topic that we've talked about um, a lot, which is the, the need for a capital reserve as the park gets older and as things start to break. Um, we are going to be doing a fix here on, um, this is in the North End on, um, oh, I believe I've written parcel eight, this is actually parcel 10. Um, in the next couple of weeks, um, we'll be doing a fix here and part of the, um, uh, part of the area under the pergola will have to be closed off as some of these stones are, as many of these stones are removed and reset um, correctly. It's um, the initial setting was um, uh, the problem. It has, um, uh, they need to be reset and that will, we believe, fix the issue. Again, for more technical details, um, uh, <laughs> Steve Germain. Um, we'll start that, the fountains will go off the Tuesday after Columbus Day, and that will enable us to get in to do this work. So it won't, it won't happen until the 15th or 16th. So, so there are a bunch of things that, that Jesse's touched on with this. Um, one is the nitty gritty of what's really happening mm -hmm. in the park, um, but the other was the community process that we engaged in this summer um, to make sure we were touching base with the communities along the Greenway to see what they were thinking. And, and the 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 Harbor Fog is a perfect example. You know, we've been going by thinking it seems okay, and people who are there all the time say, actually, you know, it's a little different than it was before. Um, so I think it's been a good process. I'd, I'd love to hear from um, the community members of the board or anybody who's been to those meetings what you, what you think we've done right, what you think we need to do differently, or anything about it. Well, Georgia, uh, thanks, Jesse, for your good report. At the uh, Chinatown uh, Community Workshop meeting, the two items that you showed were asked for. And I would recommend that now that the work is done, you send something to the Chinese newspapers, certainly, and to Sampan, to say, okay, you know, we heard you, 
and here's what we've done. And also point out that even though the cigarette buttons are there, <laughs> that they're not being used properly. Uh, but I would urge that you follow mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. That's great. Right, James? Good idea. Mm -hmm. and Vivian? No. A any other feedback from the Marines, Tim? The, uh, the presentation at the uh, Wharf District Council meeting we thought was, was very good and very timely. Mm -hmm. And we appreciated uh, the, the fact that they wanted our input mm -hmm. or the Greenway mm -hmm. wanted the input of the community is mm -hmm. what we thought about different things. And mm -hmm. I think the Fog Fountain is a perfect example yeah. because as much as we love it, we thought it could be better. And we're happy to see that you found a way to make it, to, to make it better. Mm -hmm. The, the one thing that, as a, as a community person, that we would like to see is if, if you could send us, rather than just relying on the website, if you could send us information on upcoming events, then we could communicate them to the members of our community. I think that the communications needs to be a little bit fine-tuned. Okay. Yeah, more a little bit more proactive on on the greenways part versus having the community go to the website. That's that's great to hear because we're always um, I mean we're always a little reticent about bombarding people with email. I mean this is an internal discussion: is how frequently should our e newsletter go out? You know, I mean it goes out to ballpark five thousand people, um, and. Um, with 370 events this year on the Greenway. Um, there's a tremendous amount to tell people about, and the question is, how much do they want to hear? And so it's great to get this feedback. Thank you. Yeah, actually, in that, in that respect, just Suzanne said, when the, when the local uh, produce fair was going on this weekend, no one at Rose Wharf actually knew what was going on. You know, it, they just looked out and said, it's all that. You know, I mean, it. You know, you have to be proactive. You have to go and look at it. And I knew about it because I had talked. But it was kind of you know, like, oh, what was going on out there? Yeah. <laughs> and you live there, and it's all there. So. Yeah. So we should we should figure that out. I mean, we're we're coming upon. I hate to say that the not busy season because the staff is always busy yeah. with something. But but we are coming on this sort of reflective season of, of what you know of what what we can do differently as as we shut things down for the winter and whatever. So if communication, I mean. Clearly, you know, we want mm -hmm. the, the whole Commonwealth to know and the city to know, but we clearly it want the neighbors butters, to know, yeah, right. you know, in terms of what's going on. So mm -hmm. we should, we can work on that. On, and really, any. You should try to find thoughts. a way of making it easy. Making so it easy. Yeah. yeah. And maybe it's, yeah, um, we, we, we definitely. Ra yeah. Rather than try to send it to your whole email mm -hmm. database, if there were certain people within the communities that, that, the information could be sent to, then those community people could get it out to their network. Yes, exactly. Yes. Well, yeah. well, like the property managers. Of exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Equity. Okay. If you're an equity building, or we're an equity building. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's there are ways. No, we're not equity. Uh, we're we're bark and management. Oh, oh yeah. But but it's the same. I think there are ways that yeah, we yeah. could uh, right. open up the. Community. And we should take that to the um, not only the residents but the offices too, you know, and just because a lot of things happen during the week, um, so that, that that would be good. Maybe this is another thing in the job description of the volunteer coordinator or something that, you know, <laughs> yeah. that uh, because the same thing is going to be true for volunteer days too, and, and getting that out and getting. Uh, we really hope to make that program much more robust and mm -hmm. be available more on the weekends and not just during the week, which has pretty much been, except for very specific days on the weekends, it's been more of a weekday kind mm -hmm. of volunteer program. And that will change, so that'll be good. Okay. Yes. I might just add, I, I, I know we do a lot of this at NASDAQ with respect to community outreach and having public workshops about corridor studies or you know mobility problems that have been identified, and I would just, I would just suggest that it's um, it's very hard to rely on the uh, it, it's very hard to rely on perhaps the proponent, <laughs> if you will, I can't think of a better word, um, to be fully responsible for all the communication. I think to the extent that a lot of the new members of the board that are representing community organizations to be able to identify sort of what is the 
who who is that top of the pyramid <laughs> in community X, Y, and Z, or what are the sort of um, you know the newest um, um, forums uh, for discussion? Um, I know a lot of communities outside of Boston have you know Patch, for example. And a lot of people are reading the Patch. I don't you know know if there's certain similar kind of uh, forums um, in these communities, but whatever it is, I think letting the staff know um, what those are, I'm sure they would be willing to make sure that the information gets out to them. I just wouldn't want to rely on the staff to try and figure it out. Sure, well, as Helen says, <laughs> Sam Pan, and I mean, they're all, yeah. all up and down the Greenway, yeah. they're going to be mass blog. Um, you know, we, 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 can, we can figure all that out in terms yeah. of what we do with that. That's great. Slightly moving on and not wanting to stop this conversation, but another theme that I heard, so maybe that's number three, and we can talk about this at another time if maybe you have this planned for another agenda, but the idea about the capital improvements, and um, that's always something that's been of my concern because I, you know, think about the finances often, and so I know that there's an inventory that's being gathered of all of those kinds of things. Um, so I think at some point we as a board need to kind of think about those things and how do we decide, help give input to the priorities and what is the funding requirement of that. And I think, you know, we have to, we have to deal with that and so whether that's a way for us to appeal, um, you know, to other sources for funding, you know, is depending on what the capital item is. but. The maintenance and it's just it's spectacular and I think that that's what's really important is as a board that we, we worry about how to make sure it stays spectacular because those things each passing year the list gets a little longer and the items get a little bit more and then you get into a crisis mode where you're really only able to fund the things that you know maybe you worry about a liability or you know those so I just encourage the board and the agenda to think about those things. I think that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. uh, just to bring everybody up to speed, because we do have some new board members, is that uh, three years ago we did the inventory of uh, what we had and gave it useful lives and you know counted backwards and decided what what should we be putting back into a replacement reserve or into a capital reserve if we, you know were flush with cash and could do that kind of thing. And um, it was about 800 to a million dollars, and that was um, three years ago, and we haven't done it. Um, so we're probably on the higher side of that and a million dollars right now. But what the staff did this year was take a look and say, okay, let's, let's look at that and let's see if that um, it's still true, and it is. Um, but then let's see what really needs, that, that isn't like you or I could walk along the greenway and say, mm -hmm. oh my God, that's broken. Exactly. Um, but people like Steve and others who, are, who know more what they're looking at um, <laughs> could, could look and say, you know what, that's a problem. And it, you know, in, in two years, you know, mm -hmm. even George is going to be able to figure out that's a problem, <laughs> you know, that, that kind of thing. And uh, it's in draft form now. I don't think it's ready for prime time necessarily. Um, but but maybe by the November board meeting we could we could talk about that or you know or sometime in the yeah, near future. Um, and you're right, we could maybe fundraise around it. Well, I think um, I, I I think it would be helpful probably for the full board if the finance audit and risk management committee took a look at it first and, and thought about it. But and so I, and I'm happy to have us take a first pass. That, that would be, be helpful. That would be terrific. But wanting to be sure that. Um, and anyone who's not on that board. committee, but this one really resonates with you, you can, Wants you to can be. go. You can go. Um, we, you can welcome like join the committee members of the committee. Yes, <laughs> um, oh, sorry. No, um, you know, it was always contemplated that, uh, that funding for some of the, the, the capital reserve mm -hmm. would come from um, um, the bid right. um, participants. And uh, uh, clearly, the landscape has changed. And, Right. Personally, I'm not even sure where things stand, but uh, assuming that there is some sustainability in, uh, in our finances, and that's an entirely different topic, I think that there is an opportunity to um, approach the butter community um, with uh, the work that's being done and, uh, and really work with some of the property owners 
to have them adopt some of these uh, capital improvements. And I think that's something that the, 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 the real estate people, they mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. um, the, the, the need for long-term um, capital plan. And I think that they would be a good fit. I think that's um, right. So I think it's, it's good, good that you're raising that. Uh, yeah. That, 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 that so we can work, we can help work on the list as Jesse and, and his management team does that. And uh, But I think that does make sense because to your point exactly, if if the time came that people walking through the park were able to identify them all, we would have failed in our work. So I think that's um, that's a way to have something concrete, maybe project related. So if if we can't go down the path that we had hoped, then maybe there are other paths that would that would help. But having the list and understanding the priority and the urgency of the list, I think for all of us is really important. And the. Greatest, the area of greatest concern for the abutters was the lack of control and the lack of, of, of control by the uh, uh, the, the, the donors right, essentially right. the abutters. I so I think there is a there is a good fit where you mm -hmm. can say we understand and we're responding to your concern yeah. and here's the list. Yeah. And Put you your can, money where your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And and, and you can own yeah. certain aspects and it can be done geographically. It can be done. You know, functionally or yeah, thematically, yeah. or so I think that there's a good fit there. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad that we'll have a document that we can actually share that with, would be good. with the abutters. Perfect. Actually, Jesse, I had a, 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 a question totally unrelated. <laughs> Going back to the ICA and yes. the, the partnership that was developed with, uh, with uh, the ICA on on the mural. Um, two points. One is 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 this uh, partnership sort of becoming institutionalized so that that wall uh, kind of belongs to the ICA, so to speak? Um, or number two, is there an opportunity to develop similar uh, partnerships with other Boston institutions that may not be aware that the Greenway would be a great um, place, a forum, to highlight some of their kind of interesting things that could happen. For instance, you know, uh, the uh, music, the music conservatory, uh, obviously the MFA, uh, Children. Children's mm -hmm. Museum. Is there a, a, any thought, Linda, maybe, um, uh, for, that tunnel, uh, for that type of partnership at this point, given the success of what's going on with the ICA? Yes, and it's great that you brought it up, Young, particularly as you participate on behalf of the board on the Public Art Working Group for the Conservancy, and that's the subject we've, we've been thinking about, how to get more projects in the pipeline, how to do similar partnerships, just like we have with the ICA, and kind of what's next. Um, and that's, we're going to meet, that's the subject of the next meeting, to pull in um, a number of you and other experts and connections in the art world and with other museums and institutions to, to leverage that and the success on this. Yeah, and thinking just about, for instance, the list, the MIT Museum. Absolutely. And given kind of the, the technology orientation of the city and the innovation district, there might be an opportunity to do something together, and it would really be exciting. Well, uh, Jeff Hargadon is on the, he's not chairman of the board, 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 board of the list. Yeah. 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 And he's brought people to us. Uh, We've engaged uh, representatives from different, like a, there was a, a woman that's head of like all of the collections at the list at MIT was on a selection panel with us. And so we've been building those relationships and I think now it's time to re-engage the working group and all that expertise and, and how we can move forward. So it's very timely and um, I think it's the end of this month. We're gonna rope you into another meeting. <laughs> Not to say people shouldn't raise their hand to talk here. You don't always get roped into that meeting. But no, that's great. Um, and I think that you know we've been putting out the word we're open to partnerships. We, we want to you know partner with people all over the Commonwealth, and it's starting to, to do it. And I think the publicity of the Dewey mural is really helping with that. You know it, because it's so visible and it's so out there. Well, and I should I should say also. It isn't our wall, it's Mascot's wall. <laughs> um, no, and, and so the partnership is not just with the ICA, um, it's, it's with Mascot, and um, Clinton himself, when we were originally talking about the Osgemios mural and had the first conversation with Mascot, um, helped set the tone of that meeting by saying, 
we MassDOT should be doing more public art, and um, you, the Conservancy, is bringing forward an idea here, and we just need to say yes that you can use the wall. <laughs> That's a great idea. And so, I mean, you know, well, it, it's a partnership not just with the ICA, but with but with MassDOT. And thanks particularly to Clinton for, um, you know, the the permitting for these things can be more complicated than it has been because people have seen this kind of opportunity. Yeah. There's the one at Chinatown. I mean, it's the the MFA. Isn't that the MFA? That's the MFA. MFA. That was done through the city. That was done through the city. The BRA. Uh, is that not on the Greenway? Definitely no. That's one of the many parcels that are sort of like Greenway and Jason. Assume it's Greenway, yeah. and we worry about them, but they're not really Greenway. And um, that is maybe a great lead in to Parcel 12, which is ours. Um, but, yeah. So. Um, so. Parcel 12, um, and apologies for those that don't speak the um, parcel, parcel speak number. Parcel. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, here we'll give a. Th this is intended as the orientation um, to. It's the it's one of the ramp parcels. Um, mm -hmm. This is where the Boston Museum um, was uh, at one point intended to go and. It's critical. I mean, it um, separates the North End from the city, um, not quite to the degree that the that the elevated highway did, but it's <laughs> it's um, uh, it is a major separator. It also separates the North End parks from um, the parks to the south in the Wharf District, um, and the, we all know this area is full of um, residents, tourists, others that are trying to get through, and there's this. Um, uh, this site in the way. Um, it was originally going to have the, the Boston Museum, as I mentioned. Um, here it is from overhead. Um, the existing conditions are um, not particularly nice. Um, the uncovered ramps, a chain link fence, um, a lawn without irrigation, um, no electricity. And so it, um, because it was designated for the, for the Boston Museum and because there is no infrastructure there, it has the worst looking lawn um, that is on the Greenway. Um, and if it is a problem, it is also um, kind of an incredible opportunity and one that's highlighted by, by all sorts of things that have been happening recently. So um, the, I mean, from, from north to south, the Haymarket Garage redevelopment that's under discussion, the um, public market being developed um, on parcel seven, the designation of developers for parcel nine, um, the North Bennett Street School um, moving into the new location um, on the east side of uh, the North End Parks, the and then the work that's been done on the Greenway um, just south of this. Uh, in the last three years, the Pavilion and then the Armenian Heritage Park and then the Carousel um, have all opened, and it um, it highlights how important, I mean, this site was important before, and with all that's happening here, I think it is incumbent upon us, and um, the staff um, would like to make this a real priority, and a real priority in two ways. Um, a priority for a planning effort of some sort, um, and that could look um, uh, like many different things, but a real dialogue around what this should be in a long run way, um, and also, um, doing more here in a short runway. Um, so um, we, this summer, um, had, and it's still up, the fence, um, which is the, the photo exhibit um, that was hung as a scrim, basically, on the, uh, on the chain link fence there. And it's a pretty small gesture, not one that does a lot to draw people, but it's a pretty big gesture, in fact, in terms of just turning a terrible chain link fence into something else. And um, there's a lot of potential for that type of short-term experimentation. Um, put a few of those things together, a few small components like that, and it starts to become um, a place that instead of walking around, um, it's worth walking through and walking by. Because there certainly are a tremendous number of people there with Faneuil Hall and with um, the North End and with the carousel. And so we would like to move forward in two ways and have started to have kind of preliminary conversations, chatted a little bit with Clinton um, about this, um, 
and others about um, moving forward in both of these ways. What is, uh, what is the big idea? Or what are a bunch of big ideas that are possible? Um, they will all take funding, of course. Um, but beginning that dialogue um, is the first step towards securing whatever funding that would be. And um, instead of allowing this site to remain, to continue to remain empty, to do some things to activate it in small ways, and to pilot things that might perhaps become part of the, the longer run solution or might become an idea for somewhere else on the Greenway is something we want to do. So wanted to put that um, forward uh, for discussion. There seem to have been a lot of nodding heads, but um, I think it's, uh, it feels like it could be one of the next big things on the Greenway. Well, and I, I would say as a North End, waterfront resident that it, it really is a physical and and mental barrier it, it's kind of when I go to the the tea uh, you know just, it, it kind of it I think it'd be fabulous and I, there's a lot of population in that area that would benefit from it as well it is a, a, a parcel that um, causes a lot of questions in the neighborhood because mm -hmm. um, people are always concerned about uh, what is going to happen, what could happen. And so I think uh, engaging the North End neighborhood, I think mm -hmm. there might be a lot of ideas mm -hmm. about what, could, what can be done there. And, and I think maybe we can take a cue from the, uh, the public art process that we followed, which mm -hmm. uh, created an opportunity for uh, artists worldwide to submit proposals for the two themes that we have. Um, could we have, an, is there an opportunity to have an international competition for that site? Yeah, we've, we have talked about that as, as a real possibility, and, and, um, and we're trying to sort of start the dialogue locally with the important stakeholders, the North End community, and MassDOT, and VRA, and so on, but that I think it, um, we will get the greatest ideas if we get the greatest possible group of people thinking about this. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I should also say to the to North End point, if most of the pictures here, I mean, if this picture has been focused on this edge that has the potential, there's also the other side, the, the east side of it, the cross street side, which is um, just a, I mean, just a, a wall and a mm -hmm. fence and, um, you know, a blight that we that we know um, the you know the North End cares a lot about. So I don't mean to, to set that aside. I think the right solution here encompasses not just the, the opportunity of the crescent, but how you treat the entire the entire. Quick, region. just a very quick question, yeah. Jesse. So we know. I mean, all the studies have been done about the infrastructure that would be required to, to build anything. I mean, wasn't that all? Uh, yeah, the, back the in the day when there was going to be the, right. the museum that they. One of the reasons we don't have it is because of the yeah. The history cost. of this is that there were th there are three ramp parcels. Um, six is the one way up at the top that is really just open um, highway kind of thing. Uh, Twelve is the one um, that has had the most focus because it clearly does divide the Greenway. It's not just the top of the north mm -hmm. side of the Greenway. It is it it really does break up the Greenway. Um, we were hopeful, if you remember, um, two years ago, three years ago almost, um, that when the last, um, when the Y said they could no longer do, or was it the Boys and Girls Club? It was the Y. Y. Oh, y. 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 That they could no longer do parcel six. It was like the green light that, okay, now that all the designated ones, maybe now we can take the money that was, that was thought to be available for the ramp parcels and really get something done. Um, that money, like most of things during the recession, just didn't materialize. Um, and so part of the issue here is to do something big, it does take millions of dollars to do something covering the ramp parcel, even if it's not a building, even if it's just yeah, a cover. Yeah. Um, and so, but, you know, we're, it's a new age, session's over, you know, let's talk about, um, you know, what, what, we can, what we can kind of think of doing. And, um, and see what we could do that may be very, um, you know, artsy or might be, it might, you know, but there, but to, I, I, I think that what we're all kind of coming around to is that parcel 12 is the blight on the Greenway right now. Um, 
you know, all the Greenway will be a continuous improvement and there's always more to do, but Parcel 12, I think we're all feeling like it, it is really just something that maybe we should really focus on. So we've got public art coming up, but we also have um, Parcel 12. Um, I'm not suggesting this is the right approach, but is, par is this parcel available for commercial development? Um, is that's there a really good question, Cheryl? Would you like to give us a legal brief on that? I, would <laughs> I, I, I think that it, it is not, as far as I know, okay. um, it is, you know, the, I, I think it would be possible, but I think we've kind of gotten away from that, the building on the Greenway, and the, the conversation has certainly changed to not having buildings on the Greenway. Is it is it possible? I think so. And I only ask because for those of us who worked on the air rights issues, the strategic development study, we know that obviously the big issue here is the cost of the platform. And it totally skews um, the opportunity for development. So that's, you know, when, and when we start thinking about developing a parcel like this, we get into all kinds of touchy subjects like commercial development and height and all those kinds mm -hmm. of things that make development of this parcel potentially viable. Having said all that, I guess the question is, I mean, certainly we'd all agree to your point about this being light on the um, greenway. We need to move the process along to see if there are planning opportunities. <coughs> well, there are planning opportunities, but sort of anything that's really viable for a variety of reasons. So I guess my question is to Jesse, so what do you need from us <coughs> to move that process along? Um, I think this is, I don't think we need anything now in terms of a vote or individual action, but I think we wanted to highlight this, make sure there were nodding heads all around. I think um, your point, big picture, I think that the Boston Museum, I don't think has been officially de-designated. And so before there is something big to replace that, um, a park or a development, I think that this actually perhaps requires some resolution um, legally, um, though I think that the Boston Museum has, for sort of all intents and purposes, thrown in the towel on it. Um, we wanted to bring it up to make sure that there wasn't anyone that would say, there's some reason this shouldn't be um, a focus. I mean, it looks and, good. It's, it's, I like the light, keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I didn't imagine there was going to be any issues, but you know. Um, Felt like it was good governance yeah, to actually talk right. about it with you guys. I really that. It's and very good. And very you know, good. You're, and, I, and again, I wasn't suggesting that commercial no, development I, is the right no, answer. No, you get to all the stuff. Right? I That's think good. you just. I so I, I guess yeah. the, just to bring, we wanted to bring the discussion to a close. Yeah. To I guess is there a consensus that of course we want to be thinking about options. Absolutely. I, but I, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of nodding heads. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it, it, as three years ago, this board said, yes, parcel 12 is the ramp parcel that we think is the most important. And so um, I think that, that we can go forward with that. It is at least a tri-party process, if not more. Um, it's the state, it's the city, and it's us. Um, and so I don't, I, I think it's great to really restart it. It was sort of, it's been in spurts over the years, and uh, I think if we look forward and say, okay, let's engage the community, let's, let's, we were reluctant two, three years ago um, to say that the Conservancy should be the lead on this because we were new, we were young, we were still getting the park, you know, what, what were we really doing? Um, now that Linda's proved she can do all these things <laughs> and prepare herself and everything else, um, we're, we're we're thinking, I think, that we are basically saying, not that we're gonna do it all, we're gonna right. do it in partnership, but that we're willing to stick our neck out and say, okay, can, do we wanna take, do we wanna be one of the leaders in this? Um, do we wanna say, yes, this is a priority for ours? And that, that well, yes, and I think that Young's point about, we, we've had some practices in the past few years that have worked very, very well. So engage those same practices with the right that's, people that's to do this. Because it would be so controversial to reopen this whole discussion about commercial development. I think we have to think outside the box and having an international competition where essentially it's a it's a blank sheet of paper. And that's how I think that parcel should be approached. To to say, let's do something big, let's do something that is really symbolic. 
but not reopen the, oh, should we do a commercial yes. development? Yes, and, and, and not you know, do that, and not like, come out with the old plans that were good once or whatever, but that, you know, start a fire. Yeah, and, 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 and create all this, um, or rekindle all this tension, you know, within the neighborhood. But let's do something that's really outside the box. And it's, in order to do that, you have to open it to a, to a competition. And it can be done without, I think, a lot of money. That's good. You know, well, well, MIT and Harvard and you know, probably others have their urban planning and, and landscaping you know, programs. Proxico. Yeah. But they also have, have the competition. You know. I mean, there, yeah, that would be the least cost land. option. But there may be some other. <laughs> Linda, you had. Um, I just had a couple of things we wanted to contribute, and this also reinforce what Jesse was explaining about kind of a parallel track of um, we're getting so much smarter about learning about what's working and doesn't work on the Greenway. The community is having a chance to really understand it better because these ideas that were planned way back, you know, like 15, 20 years ago, many of them were developed when the, when the elevated artery was still there. And so conceptualizing what could be or what would work was was really impossible, even for those of us who are trained in that. It's just it's such a different space now. And um, that's sort of one comment. Secondly, um, I think when you start using the words big and development, it's going to start to get people really unsettled and thinking back, you know, 10 years more planning and meetings and thinking about big stuff that's permanent now and forevermore. I think that the profession um, is learning about sort of flexible and um, things that are adaptable and lighter touches of intervention um, in terms of capital improvements often can be terribly impactful and so and not necessarily thinking of it in terms of a big platform and of a big building that the there are other kinds of things that you yeah, can, thinking, can look at. You know, yeah. I know, I know big, you weren't, you know, but I just think that there's the nomenclature that someone might think is what you're saying. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it could be a forest, it could yeah, be, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. it could be anything and, mm. and, and in order to to tap into that creativity you can't bring it down to with all due respect to the neighborhood mm -hmm. that's not where those big ideas are <laughs> going to be found oh come on we're going to put an italian yeah. restaurant <laughs> <laughs> but actually just to that point and i want to push back a little bit on what you said because sure. i feel like what i'm thinking and i'm agreeing with you on, uh -huh. one of the benefits of an international competition putting aside the competition uh -huh. piece is I think what we're saying that potentially in order to make change work on this parcel, it's not going to have to be big, but it may need to be a bit dramatic in oh, order to sell it. And I mean, even for example, as small as this is, I was in Rome over the weekend, and one thing you really notice in Rome now is that all these street restaurants that are entirely in glass, they're small, they're not big, but they're in glass. They're in glass. People are sitting in restaurants in really cold weather, eating, and but everybody sees it. But I mean, I would never have thought about doing something like that here. So, I think that in a way, as you're going through a planning process, you know, some incremental things are interesting and small and can be impactful. But I also think it's important to consider more dramatic kinds of ideas. Completely completely agree, and if you were hearing differently, I was just saying it's a nice parallel track to mm -hmm. be doing smaller things and testing them out while you're concurrently exploring um, ideas. And so the word the word big sometimes can be very threatening depending upon how it's just printed cold. Mm -hmm. I think big ideas is, is what you're looking to try to achieve and really outside the box thinking about what would be a wonderful you know, open space, really, and this is part of a park. And it divides this park, and this is all about a long linear park system, and, and what could be the right project that could make this space come alive and really be a wonderful amenity, both for the whole greenway as well as you know the abutters. And, and so it's a it's a process, but it's maybe thinking about it in different ways. So I guess I'm agreeing violently with you with what you're saying. Um, if that it was coming across differently. Um, and I just want to clarify a bit because you know the the. the the whole thing that we always balance is the neighborhoods and the international best-in-class park. And I think what we're saying is we need to talk with the neighborhood. We need to talk with what people really want to see there because when it works for the neighborhood, 
and we do it in a world-class way, it works for everybody. And so mm -hmm. I, I just don't want people to pick up that we're just saying, you know, heck with what people around here think, we're just gonna do something international. Um, and, and, but, but we need to get both. We need to have it be a park that locals love and that everyone loves, and, and that's the commitment. So, if, right. so as we can see from just this 15 minute discussion, there are lots of ideas, there are lots of um, pros and cons <coughs> to going temporary versus going permanent. Um, we're gonna have to hash all those things out, um, and there'll probably be a working group that will work with Linda to do that. Um, you know, maybe it will start with the, with the public art discussion, but it will probably be a different group on, on Parcel 12 mm -hmm. um, that will really take over on that. Can so I this is to that, sorry that you add into the process the economic viability a little bit because we all know this is the most expensive parcel to develop because it needs a platform. Right. And if we're so it's close to the it doesn't need a platform if we do a forest, for instance. Well, so right. You know. we do Forests that has reed structures that are about you know. Six yeah. Inches. yeah. Well, that's my guarantee. Right. Okay. As the as okay. the MBA um, that we will not ignore the economics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Great. Um, yes. Public comment. Yeah. Sir. Uh, Dave Kubiak, Northern Water Corporation Association. I agree with just about everything that was said by everyone about this parcel, with the exception of going out for an international competition. I think that's way premature. Uh, I do believe that just the planning and public process by itself is going to be, or should be, a huge undertaking. That alone is going to take quite a long time. Please don't try to do it quickly. Take your time, do it right, bring the community in, but we also obviously know that this is just about our community. It's about everyone who paid for the, for the uh, for the Greenway. Dramatic, I think, is dramatic, I guess was mentioned that, I think is certainly should be part of that discussion as well. A uh, few things. So one is consider a, a very well planned and well implemented planning and public process before you get to the point of going out for for a uh, uh, with competition or bids or whatever proposals. Secondly, I think that we need to, the public and the board need a much better sense of the, of who's in control of this parcel. And the questions have come up at the board, so if there's anything the board needs to do now, that they can do now, is better define what that is. Is the jurisdiction or the control or the authority that the Conservancy has over Parcel 12 any different than it is over any of the other parcels? That's, I think, an important question. Uh, has the has MassDOT completely removed this parcel uh, from its development designation? I believe that has not happened formally, but I'm not sure. And also, uh, uh, even a broader question is, I certainly hope that all of your par parcels are protected under Article under uh, Article 97. Yes, I certainly hope that's the case. I believe that's the case. I'm. I don't know what the mechanism was for protection under Article 97, and I would want to make sure that Parcel 12 has those protections as well. You know, you bring up really good points, and it just it just goes. This, these are complicated. I mean, there are there are federal um, regulations here in terms of what was promised on Parcel 12, on who's responsible for those promises. This is this is really nitty gritty, and I don't think that we're going to be able to solve it tonight. Um, but you bring up really good points, and and that will all be part of it. I think that what we're saying is is that we're getting the sense of. Instead of it being like the city saying, well, you know, this is an issue and that's an issue. And everybody's coming together saying, you know, the Green Man really looks pretty good. And <coughs> Parcel 12 is really an aberration. And so, you know, we, we finally got to the point where I think that all the parties are agreeing, it, wouldn't it be great to get something done? That doesn't mean it's going to get done next year or even the year after. But maybe we could do little things to mitigate the damage a little bit while we think of the big ideas. But this is this is not going to be 
a year process or something. This is this is longer term to your point. Yes, Nancy. Let me add to what David said so brilliantly. Let me give you another viewpoint from the neighborhood point of view, which as you probably know has its own priorities. Before you can even take a step, I suggest you talk with the commercial street abutters. They have a very strong organization. They've been at every single meeting that we had. By the way, you folks are just picking it up. We've been through it for 10, 12 years, trying to work with different proposals, different developers, and we had everything from the museum to housing to arty uh, garden up there. None of it, this was accepted by the, a certain portion of the community. Secondly, you're talking about big money, and I've heard you say it takes a lot of money. Do you have any idea, uh, what do you think it would cost to develop that parcel? Well, Nancy, I, I don't think that we want to engage no, in no, right no. now. No, no, no. I know you I, don't. I know that's history. I know it was about 15 to 20 million to do the to do the the the, the, the platform, but you know that's that's not where we're going with this. And I think that's where we're saying we want we, there will be a time when we'll really dig down into Parcel 12. Um, you know, it, it's getting past the time that we've allotted for this meeting, and I don't think tonight's the night for that. Well, but voices like yours that have known this, have lived it, have worried it, have have really given so much of your time for it, um, will definitely be heard. Well, I just wanted to save you some time by indicating what your main issue is going to be. It's going to be money. It's not going to be designs or ideas or possibilities. It's going to be money, period. If you get a couple of hundred million dollars, you can do it. Without a well, couple hundred million, you're not going to do anything. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, 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 I you know, I'm short of a lottery ticket. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get a couple well, hundred million. Well, let's get some lottery tickets all around. But, uh, but, but that would be that would be lovely. But I do want to move on. Unless there's, is there a short? Yeah, well, I think you're moving in the right direction in terms of setting up a working group to really get this all out on the table. Look at it really in phases. You're going to have to. Uh, starting maybe with the art uh, group is good, uh, but until you get a real vision and criteria for where you really want to go, which will come out of the working group, um, it's still going to be a cul-de-sac at best. I mean, the, the artwork or the pictures did a great thing of taking the curse off of it, but maybe making it a Hirsch Orange sculpture garden, that's one, but it's still going to be, it's big difficulty, as I think Peter Mead would call it, it's a smile with a tooth missing uh, for this whole asset. And until we deal ultimately with the permeability issue, it's going to be No, that. this is this is a big deal. Yeah. I mean, we, we are not saying that Parcel 12 is going to get resolved. Yeah. But, we're, but we've sort of been trying yeah. to avoid it. And I think what we're, what we're saying, I mean, we, we, we got excited about it about three years ago when it looked like everything was getting undesignated. Yeah. And what we're basically saying as a board is, okay, um, let's see if we can get something done here. And it may be a big, audacious thing, or it may be incremental things, but let's let's look at it. Let, let's re-engage and, and see where we can get with that. If I can chime in very quickly, Dan Wilson from the North End, uh, also with Nancy and others, way back on this one. Chris, um, the first thing you have to do just to save time. I mean, you can have international competition at some point, but the first thing you have to do is look at the legal commitments. Absolutely. You can have an international competition, they have a thousand ideas, but the only thing you can do here is development with a, with, you know, with a platform. Um, so you have to look at the legal commitments and see what is possible and then what would have to be changed in order to do anything other than what has been committed and whether the federal government wants every dime possible out of this as part of the, that might no, have been the deal. No, it's part of the issue, no question. So you have to no, do there, legal analysis before there, you do anything. There's any the that. state responsibility, there's the Fed responsibility, there's what, there's that whole legal aspect of it. I think we're, so, we're not saying like, oh, let's do parcel 12 next summer. I mean, that is not what, what this is. This is, uh, let's really think about it, let's spend some time, let's see if we can get some working groups together, both involving all the folks that we should involve. And I think we're getting lots of nuts. 
So, I, you know me, I like to start meetings on time, I like to end meetings on time. Um, I've already lost that one, we, we're not ending on time, but I did just want to say to the board that, um, as you all know, our lease is up November 30th. Um, we are not in, um, we are hoping for discussions with the Department of Transportation, um, but they have not started yet. Um, so we are hoping that the issue is clear, that the public-private partnership seems to be working, um, and that we'll, we'll keep going with that. But it has not started, and I wanted you all to know that. Um, it's, um, we will try, um, again, to, to get that real conversation going. There's been a lot of talk of the conversation, but, um, but in terms of the actual negotiation, um, that really hasn't started yet. Um, but I will keep you posted. Um, Do so you great. know who you're negotiating with yet? Department of Transportation. Yeah, but I, I, no. no, no, no plans, no dates. No. They, they do know it's this year, right? <laughs> <laughs> they do know it's November 30th, um, and it's it's a question of priorities. On um, and you know it's um, you know in November at the board meeting, if we really haven't gotten anywhere, we will be facing what we do December 1st. Um, but. I'm hoping that that will not be the conversation. I'm hoping that we'll simply be reporting on the lease negotiation. Um, but right now, there's just not a lot to report. I assume there's no automatic extension in the lease or anything, barring notification. We have the, the 2008 legislation that um, provided the framework um, said that there could be up to a 55-year lease. Um, the, the first lease was five years. So technically, we could get a 50-year lease, um, but you know, we—that's the only thing it is. It isn't that it automatically renews. We need a continuing resolution. We need a continuing resolution. <laughs> God help us all. Oh my God. Uh, no, that is what we don't want. Is, is kicking the can down the road. We'd like we'd like to just get it so that we can get resolved. Because uh, there's so many good things happening. So thank you all. Um, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Can I ask about the executive director um, search and how can you give us a quick update? Um, there really is no update. Without a lease, it's really difficult to do something permanent with the structure. Um, and so it is all entwined. So there's nothing going on? There's nothing going on. Um, Okay, so can I have a... Can I just say one thing? Thank you for your past year. Thank you very much for all the time that you've put in and shared your past year. Here, here. And thanks to Jesse for how he continues to step up with regard to the, the uh, point that we're not doing a search right now because we need a lease and we need something more to be able to talk about. And, and so I want to thank Jesse and I want to thank you. And, that's all I have to say. Here, here. <laughs> well, thank you, and I know I speak for Jesse in saying it's the board and the staff and everybody that make it all, well, all work. But thank you very much. We'll see you all in November. Yes.